Today's topic is about the great vessels of the heart. The major vessels of the heart, which are mostly found in the middle mediastinum, operate to transport blood to and from the heart as it pumps. There are four major vessels of the heart. These are aorta, pulmonary artery, pulmonary veins and vena cava. We will go through each vessel. Let us first start with the aorta. The aorta is the body's biggest artery. It transports blood that has been oxygenated to the rest of the body. The aorta emerges from the left ventricle's base through the aortic orifice. I like to divide the aorta in sections for organizational purposes. The ascending aorta, which is its initial section, is located inside the visceral layer of the pericardium. The first branches of ascending aorta are the coronary arteries. The coronary arteries supply oxygenated blood to the heart muscles. You can watch my coronary circulation video that I have linked in the description below. After giving out the coronary arteries, the aorta then forms an arch. The aortic arch gives out three branches that supply the head, neck, and upper limbs. These are brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid and the left subclavian. The brachiocephalic trunk gives out two more branches that are right common carotid and the right subclavian artery. The aorta becomes the descending aorta after the aortic arch and continues to descend via the diaphragm into the abdomen. Even in the thorax, the descending aorta gives out some branches like the bronchial arteries, pericardial branches, etc. In the abdomen, the aorta continues to descend and give out many branches. We will discuss the branches of aorta in detail in the upcoming videos. Now, we will look at the clinical correlations of aorta. There are two important clinical concepts that are aortic dissection and aortic aneurysm. Let us first start with aortic dissection. An aortic dissection is a rupture of the aorta's inner wall. Blood flows through the tear in two different places, via the aorta's usual lumen and into the wall, where it becomes immobile. The aortic lumen may narrow as a result of blood entering the wall, decreasing blood flow to the rest of the body. Additionally, it can make the wall weaker and enlarge even more, which might result in an aortic aneurysm which we will discuss next. Next, we will look at the pulmonary arteries. First, let us decode the words. The word pulmonary means lungs and artery is the blood vessel that brings blood away from the heart, so pulmonary artery brings blood away from the heart to the lungs. However, a point to remember is that this is the only artery that brings deoxygenated blood. This unique character of pulmonary artery makes it an important question to be asked in exam. The pulmonary trunk is a short, thick vessel that forms the beginning of the arteries. The pulmonary trunk then divides into the right and left pulmonary arteries between the levels of T5 and T6. The left pulmonary artery further divides into two branches to deliver blood to each lobe of the left lung. The right pulmonary artery, which supplies blood to the right lung, also splits into two branches. Now, we will look at pulmonary veins. Veins carry deoxygenated blood but pulmonary vein carry oxygenated blood from the lung back to the heart. Each lung has a superior and an inferior pulmonary vein, making a total of four. On the posterior surface, they enter the pericardium and drain into the superior left atrium. The last great vessel is the vena cava. Vena cava is the largest vein in the body. Vena cava returns deoxygenated blood from all parts of the body to the heart. There are superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. First, we will look at the superior vena cava. The superior vena cava drains deoxygenated blood from the upper body that is above the diaphragm, except the lungs and heart and sent to the right atrium. The superior vena cava is formed by left and right brachiocephalic veins and it travels inferiorly through the thoracic area before draining into the upper part of the right atrium. I have done a video regarding the clinical anatomy of superior vena cava which I will link it in the description. Next is the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava drains deoxygenated blood from all body parts below the level of the diaphragm and returns it to the heart. Very briefly, we will see the anatomy. The inferior vena cava is formed by the common iliac veins in the pelvis. 
Deoxygenated blood is also drawn from the hepatic, lumbar, gonadal, renal, and phrenic veins as it moves through the abdomen. After traversing the diaphragm, the inferior vena cava enters the pericardium at the level of T8. It empties into the right atrium's lower section. I will make a separate video regarding the inferior vena cava. These are some questions that can test your remembrance of the topic. Pause this video and try to answer them. That's all regarding great vessels of the heart. If you find value in this video, please like, comment, and subscribe as this will motivate me into doing more videos like this. If you have any biology topics that need discussion, send them via the Google form that I have linked below. Thank you and see you in the next video.